This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on We Hate Movies, well, look at that. It's another movie where people are constantly chugging blue liquid. It's Max Payne. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Major Payne. And we (laughs) hate movies. Wrong movie. What? Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. We got another video game adaptation for you. It's John Moore's Max Payne from 2008. I got to say right up front, this dude, dreadful fucking filmography. Unbelievable. (laughs) You take a look at this shit. Flight of the Phoenix remake, Omen remake, Behind Enemy Lines, A Good Day to Die Hard, this and something called IT with Pierce Brosnan Lookout. (laughs) I never saw the Omen remake, but the uh, the F- the Flood of the Phoenix remake is uniquely terrible. Very That's bad. That's very bad. The Omen remake is very bad. Saw also. both of those in theaters. Actually, saw Behind Enemy Lines in theaters and A Good Day to Die Hard. I, I, I was John Moore fanatic. I yes. guess so. Whoops. His would... picture on Letterboxd is hilarious, <laughs> by the way. He is like an American flag scarf, but it's oh. not like the colors. It's like degrade. It's like the cover of the... Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's all like, black and white. <laughs> it's really it. something. Look at weird. look it up on Letterboxd. It, it's incredible. I it looks like he's sweating through the oldies in this fucking <laughs> picture. I gotta tell you. I will say, if you asked me in 1999 if uh, Enemy at the Gates is one of the best movies ever made, I would behind probably enemy say lines. it was. Oh, Behind Enemy Lines. Okay, so then yeah. I'm way wrong. Okay, so, <laughs> that movie. so Behind Enemy Lines was that's Owen Wilson. Yes. yes. Wow, I'm behind enemy lines. Wow. wow. And Gene oh, Hackman's wow. like, oh, we got to get him out of here before I retire from filmmaking. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, this, is getting, this is getting pretty bad. Kevin, you were uh, not kidding. I don't know what is going on with this scarf. He's got a tie on in this God picture. Damn it. Now I, no, I got to look Post it in the chat. Up. Post it in the chat. What's, I mean, it's on my iPad. I can't do that. But I what's, I'll get it. Kevin, you do it. I mean, also, what's crazy. This dude's an Irishman. Oh, that's nice. He kind of looks like, uh, what's his face there? There's a bomb in Centennial Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul Walter Hauser or, the act- or actually, uh, what's his face? <laughs> actually, no, not Richard Julie. Looks okay. like Paul Walter Hauser. Got it, got it, got it. That Omen remake, again, is just so bad. So yeah. totally yeah. fucking okay. bad. I'm seeing the photo now. Yeah, he's got the the stars draped over him there. Uh, it's a bit of a weird choice, uh, especially for an Irishman. I mean, maybe it's just a scarf that has stars on it. I don't like that anyway. That's yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. It's in a very specific I'm gonna pattern. Say, well, the Irish like stars, horseshoes, and yeah. balloons. It and honestly, all those kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, that seems like it's a uh, it's a Tinder photograph that gets swiped the wrong way a lot. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, uh, so anyway, <clears throat> this guy he saw Sin City. And he loved yep. it so much, he wanted to make Dim City. <laughs> Ooh, yes. nice. How, how long were you working Ooh. on that this afternoon? I was, uh, after I watched the film, I jotted that little number down. And oh, I was nice. like, I'm going to work that in tonight. <laughs> Eric, went to the co- Eric went to the comedy store for one joke. <laughs> like, like, Eric Siska, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Siska. You got any like, onesies? Yeah. <laughs> and what do you guys think about there? this? Dim City. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not only a you know dark and grainy film, right? You know, uh-huh. and also the mood, right? But also... Uh, yeah. Uh, Mark Wahlberg's big dumb guy. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. That's also yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a big old moron. Uh, yeah. I would also say, look- Eric, yeah. uh, you could also go with uh, Dumbstantine. Uh, would also be a- <laughs> Dumbstantine would also work 100%. <laughs> yeah, I wrote down in my notes, you, sir, are no Constantine to this movie. Oh, dude, I mean, I like, mean, not even close. Listen, I've kind of been dancing around, and don't tell me, I don't, I don't know why I can't tell you this. I've been dancing around a Constantine rewatch. Because it's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah and like a- after this, definitely getting thrown mm-hmm. on this week. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should mention, I believe the video game doesn't have this crazy supernatural uh, element. Well, it's, yeah. It, but this it isn't even a real supernatural <laughs> element anyway. 
it's that's a true. It's shared, a hallucination. It's a yeah. shared hallucination, which doesn't make a ton of sense. Yes. And if it, and, and if you know if it's special to the world, sure. But then you have to explain that to me a little bit. Uh, we put monster juice in the drugs <laughs> by mistake. I mean, I don't know, man. This is a movie about a fucking detective whose family is murdered. And he's trying to figure out why. And like a pharmaceutical company is involved. And like, that's all it should be. I don't need this Norse well, mythology well, that, horse that, that, shit. All the pharmaceutical stuff, I assume, has something to do with Resident Evil, too. Mm, because also yeah. video game uh, adaptation stuff. Well, we should say up front, though, then, Chris, because I mean, like, get this out of the way. Yeah, this is a video game. Did anybody play the game? I did. I definitely I don't know if I played. I might have played both of them, uh, but I've definitely played at least one all the way through. Wow. I think in one of my sadder years, I watched a buddy of mine play it for a while. That was oh, kind of fun. Steve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never. You're I just never, hanging uh, at a buddy's house, drinking beer. He's played a video game. We're like, this is pretty cool. Yeah. It came out like 2001, so I either played it like I don't know the summer before college, yeah. or or maybe freshman year, being a real cool guy yeah. with my fucking tower PC. Yeah, I never uh, touched the stuff. Uh, but <laughs> I, did see, yeah, I, 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 I saw a picture. Somebody showed me a picture. It, he looks in the video game like he's one of the Cuomo clan. Yeah. And it, got yeah I mean, he look looks like a him. scuzzy, like Guido kind of guy. And about, Very much. Yeah. Eric, do I uh-huh. recall correctly? He kind of talks like this. I don't know what's yeah. going to happen to me, Max Payne. A- absolutely, because we're trying to do, I mean, we're really trying to do that hard-boiled, like, film noir-ish type of stuff. The entire video game really relies on, like, voiceover narration of that guy who's right. in this movie, by the way, James um, McCaffrey. Is yeah, that- that's right. Yeah. He plays the FBI agent in this movie who gets, like, a one-second scene. Apparently, he was the voice actor for Max Payne in the game. Ah. And, and it, it, makes, like- it makes sense, like, that you would do this for him, too, because, like, by this point, well, 2008, <laughs> I think Rescue Me maybe it wasn't over, but it was definitely drawing to a close. So like he had been on TV sort of regularly for a while at this point in the world of like, you know, when we talk about video game adaptations, we talk about this a lot, which is like when you're watching a two minute movie, like, well, fuck, I just kind of wish I was watching Indiana Jones because yeah. again, it's, it's the same thing where it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, let's make Indiana Jones, the video game with a sexy lady. This is like, let's make a cool noir movie as a, you know, Rock'em Sock'em video game, and that's cool. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, but what if we added fucking Dark Angels to it for some reason? <laughs> I just don't even know. The drug of the game was called Valkyr, I believe. It and, was. And uh, you know what's great about the video game, too? And they, they do do a scene or two of it in this movie, is we were just saying, oh, you got to activate bullet time. Because remember the Matrix, everyone? We got to do oh, bullet yeah. time. Yeah. So everything yeah. slows down, and you could shoot, like, I don't know, more funly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like, uh, there's a game out now that I was playing on Switch called, oh, fuck. I think the word hot is in the title. It's um, kind of like a shoot 'em up thing. The graphics are like very uh, sort of like basic, but it's all that sort of like physics, like slowing down time. and Hot, hot girls. You're talking about pornography? Dude? Of course. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck. Maybe I am. Great franchise. They got to put that on, uh, out on it's, Switch. Where's it's, the port for <laughs> Remaster <porno>? that. <laughs> it's not this, but it's like hot shot or something like that. I don't know. Super hot? Yes. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Oh, okay. There Super we go. Mario yeah. presents hot, hot girls. <laughs> oh, get over here, ladies. Get kissing each other. What? Woohoo! Uh-oh. Oh, we're all oh, getting canceled. Oh no! <laughs> Bowser stole our ladies, man. <laughs> the one thing stole all the hot, hot girls. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, girls. <laughs> it makes sense for those girls to be undressed in Bowser's castle because he's got mm. all those lavas in his house. It's true. It's I'm awesome. sorry, Mario, but your hot, hot girls are in another castle. <laughs> I mean, Bowser is also, he's all about not wearing anything. Like he's a he's a nudist, of course. He only has yes, that collar. Oh, absolutely. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and that collar tells you he's everything. Sex you forward. He's very sex forward. Yeah, I see yeah. absolutely. So he's got like a big old turtle dick or something, Bowser. Yeah, but it, it opens up and has to come out. It's like the shape mm. of water dick. Oh, did they show that dick? I got to rewatch but it. They, I haven't seen they that explain since it. The They explain ladies it at are, some point. Ladies are attracted to the power, though. You know what yes. I mean? Oh, he yeah, is a course. king, right. for sure. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's got like a James Gandolfini build as well. You know Plus what I mean? He's, like, yeah, but he's also super strong, dude. So all these hot, hot girls, he's doing like those <laughs> those cool like standing 69s, you know? He, he's, he's, also, he's, awesome. he's also super strong in another way. 
this guy is not firing any blanks. He's got so many kids, uh, and they all have castles. Really that's yeah. true. That dude has way too many kids. I think Bowser's fucking Irish in those games. <laughs> and you know, tip off his shell, very horny. Uh -huh. Wrap it up, you fucking fat dragon. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wrap it up, you fat dragon. He had a shell, That's a t-shirt, right? right? <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. <laughs> um, so so yeah. one thing that I know was not in the video game was this uh, subplot, the Manchurian Candidate-esque uh, subplot about the Marines and the super drug. Yeah, well, you know what, dude? I mean, that's just straight fucking we're in the middle of the war in Afghanistan. Yes. Uh -huh. Ooh, I mean, we're commenting. Well, I I was more surprised, and I because I've never seen, I don't know if you guys have seen this like where, so he's like a detective, right? Yep. And then his wife gets murdered. Whoa. Dude, could you Whoa. believe I, it? Shit. I mean, like detectives usually like solve crimes for like things that happen to other people, right? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. usually what you expect. <laughs> that's like getting home and opening your door and finding a podcast in your house. <laughs> I, I would say that's almost too personal, Steve, for you to yeah, be getting involved with. It's strange, but that he does do it though because he has to, I guess, right? I, I know, and it was just so fucked up. Like, oh my god, they killed his wife, and dude. And his baby daughter. I've never yes. seen that in a movie before. That was really, <laughs> that fucking blew my mind. This is big time, the video game. I remember there was even like a, there's sort of, not like full on hallucinations, but there were like dark dream levels or something where it's gotcha. like you're running around this, this darkened house and you're hearing the baby cry forever. And it's just like, okay. So they basically, I mean, they use that like pseudo haunted house shit to like filter in this other stuff like all the fucking they're not, i almost call them parademons but like these <laughs> yeah. valkyries or whatever right because like if you got a dark house and there's a like lone baby crying somewhere in, in the darkness like creepy shit and then at that point it's like well why not some fucking evil angel things let's do it sure yeah because well the other why else are you doing this weird look like yep. if it's just going to be a, a normal like, oh, a, a corrupt organization, uh, Bo Bridges killed my wife. <laughs> I, like if it's just going to be that, like there's no real reason for this to look so stupid and like it's, to look over stylized this way. It's incredible that <clears throat> this movie is 08 in 07 uh, or was it also 08? No, I think it was 07. Whatever year fucking Iron Man came out and Jeff Bridges is also playing a guy yeah. who like knew the the protagonist his whole life is a trusted confidant and yep. then also turns out to be crooked, just like Bo Bridges I, in this movie. I think that's fantastic. I really have to know. I know it's the name. Iron in, Man's 08, by the way. Yes. So the, the same year, the Bridges bros playing crooked. <laughs> hey, well, friends. look at us. We're playing crooked Fox, brother. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just well, really need to know if they if did they hire Bo Bridges because the name of the character was BB? I, I think <laughs> so. I really need to know. Mark Wahlberg would just could only call him Bo Bridges. So, <laughs> so, OK, I could shorten it to BB, maybe. That's how I remember. I'll, Mark, I'll remember you, bro. Mark, his name is Carla. No, you know, just BB's fine. We'll just we'll shake. We'll shake. <laughs> we'll just reshoot those other. We're gonna have to reshoot it's those fine. other scenes. We're just gonna have Look, to shoot them. I'm Marky Mark, and I'm MM, <laughs> and he's Bo Bridges, and he's BB. What's so fucking hard? <laughs> I was so curious about this because I I I assumed that was the reason. That like it has to be. It's just Marky Mark didn't know yeah. what to say. He had to say BB for Bo Bridges, but apparently it was a character in the game, but a completely kind of different character. It was like a crooked DEA agent. Well, it's the same character because they take the DEA thing kind of out of this. He's just the security head for the evil corporation. Right. The uh, big pharma place. Uh, Ares or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but in the, in both this and the other one in the video game, He's like the the father figure, and he was the former partner of his of of Harold Payne or whoever his father is. <laughs> but that's he was that in this movie too. Yeah, yeah, they both. That's the one thing that keeps. But the DEA thing, I don't think is anywhere in this. Oh no, it's not DEA. I think he's supposed to be like a beat cop. Or, but it was a weird. I was having trouble being like. So you were a cop, and now you work for this pharmaceutical agency. But yeah, I guess if he's like the head of security for that sure it's just an odd career transition for bb absolutely <laughs> and they, i kept on thinking i'll be it's a throwback but i every time the word bb and the name bb is said a lot in this movie it every is. time i yep. thought about 
uh, uh, what's Deadly, Deadly Friend? Deadly Friend. I, every oh, time, really? Every time I was like, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I was like, oh, is the fucking little monster going to come? The robot monster going to come around the corner? Speaking of the little monster coming, I kept thinking about Netanyahu. I just kept thinking <laughs> Netanyahu. <laughs> <laughs> and so sure. the next pain uh, we have to uh, kill your wife you understand uh, she said something nice about Palestinians <laughs> so she must be killed uh, now now or right now Max pain is my favorite video game when I first heard BB-8 from Star Wars, I thought they were talking about Netanyahu's uh, final term. Ken. They kept electing that guy. Uh, so this thing starts out with uh, Max Payne floating in the water. Uh, you know, I don't believe in heaven. I believe in pain and fear and death. There's armies cool. of bodies in the river. I mean, I think that last line, there's armies of bodies in this river, is pretty cool. I do like the visual of him floating and there's all these other corpses like at least you don't got it like we do (laughs) join us down here have a beer it's actual armies of people yeah it's all the uh test subjects from the army that died on valkyrie or whatever and they threw them in the water yeah it's bow bridges fucking dumping ground (laughs) i was half waiting for him to start saying so here's me I was banging this old actress. And then uh, 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 some former director was also telling me I should leave, but I didn't, so I got shot. <laughs> oh, shit, Von Stroheim, bro. <laughs> Von oh, what? Man. Von Dutch? Yeah, I, I love that shit. I would, be- I would bet everything that I have that Mark Wahlberg has never heard of Eric Von Stroheim. <laughs> But no de- doubt about but it. But he has, he has uh, rocked no fewer than 20 Von Dutch hats. In, in the oh, hat. yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, Eric Von Stroheim, the hat guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's famous. I This movie, and it's, especially when it starts to get going, speaking of Von Dutch and douchebags, it feels like a fake movie from the Entourage universe, doesn't it? Does. It does. Oh, it feels, oh, yeah. Remember that, I that, am Jekyll and Hi- yeah, that Jekyll and Hyde movie he makes <laughs> in, the, in the Entourage movie? It's yeah. probably better than Max Payne. Probably. The Escobar <laughs> one, too, probably, I would mm-hmm. imagine. Oh, Medellin, bro? Yeah, I've yeah, been. <laughs> Talking about Medellin? <laughs> the, oh, um, is Vince going to do Max Payne or not? <laughs> uh, not, actually. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I noticed when he this is kind of an interesting thing speaking so we we're talking about the Bridges brothers a second ago a thing I observed last night watching this he's floating in this water right and he's there and he's like clearly it's Mark Wahlberg like in a tank and he's holding his breath and shit when Mark Wahlberg is underwater like totally uh, underwater right he looks exactly like Donnie Wahlberg mm. Which is to say that Donnie Wahlberg is a waterlogged Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> That's yeah, accurate. Right. That seems about right. <laughs> if they ever need a, you know, him to play like a, like if they ever have to show Mark Wahlberg as a corpse, just pull, mm. pull in Donnie. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. Just and like splash a bucket of water on him. You'll believe that's Mark Wahlberg's uh, dead body. Honestly, uh, and Jenny McCarthy seems like a perfect simulacrum of all of the women that Mark Wahlberg has knocked up or given a venereal disease to. <laughs> well, not anymore, my friend. Uh, he's found Jesus. So you should. Fuck, oh, really? You should just fuck right off. Oh, hold oh, on okay. a second. I'm not going to. I'll stop then. Mark found Jesus. Oh, yeah, man. Where was he? <laughs> Bend over and I'll show you. <laughs> he was at the garden. <laughs> well, he's doing. He's got some new movie where he's playing a priest. Too. Yes, oh, really. No. Is it like a uh, a violent it's, priest of some nature? Yeah, it actually <laughs> is. It, dude, it's a fucking. He's a. He's a. It's called Father Stew, uh-huh. and he plays a boxer who becomes a priest for some reason. And Mel, you know who's in it? Mighty Mel Gibson's also in it. Oh, oh yes, yes. That's, yes. Yeah, that's, that's what awesome. you want. The Catholics are coming out tonight. Is he, he's is a he the killer pope? priest? <laughs> he the pope? No, I think he's just another guy like who's like. Oh, why? How could you be a priest? Or I guess he's just dad. Maybe they have the same last name. Now look at the the cast. Oh. Name. <laughs> no, or God brother possibly. Nice. Mel Gibson cannot play Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that's brother. a good point. That would dad. be very funny if it did have. But I heard the last thing I heard from uh, all Marky Wahlberg was that he was definitely going to do. Uh, and this is what I thought you meant when he became a Christian. He's going to do the Bill Belichick biopic. Oh, nice. Oh, could finally what? get his Oscar. That's how he would get it. I mean, come on. Better start Just eating. Joke Oscar. <laughs> Do it. He's he's playing Bill Belichick? He wants to eat. That was the last thing he oh. says. Like, look out. Bill Belichick, a biopic. Me coming. Is Bill Bio- Bill Belichick? I almost said Bill Biopic. Is Bill Belichick <laughs> uh, famously Christian? 
I don't know. I have, no. it's 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 Mark Wahlberg. What the? But it's it, the Pats, baby. It, yeah, it's a faith. I mean, it's a faith that unto right. itself. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that would be something you would call it. Chicken wing the movie. <laughs> 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 so whatever, and like we kind of flash back to a very meaningless thing, which is like Max Payne works the cold cases, and that's all he does. And there's this guy, like this guy is like. If you end up here, you just you're a piece of shit, just like Max Payne. Right, he's showing this this fellow around, yes. and I'm like, okay, so this guy's going to be a character yep. in the movie. That'd he's going to cool. be our conduit. He's going to be our eyes as the audience. No, he's just gone. Well, it's right? funny because he's, he's, he's a black gentleman, and like it's like he's, he asks like Mark Wahlberg, like, "Hey man, you want to get a beer?" And he doesn't even say anything to him. And he's like. Yeah, Max doesn't go out much. I'm like, nah, if you were white, he'd probably go out with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Max Payne. Yeah. I, I buy that with Max Payne. The funny thing, too, is this other, this like egg shaped gentleman that's showing the new guy around. Like, it's not just like Wahlberg is down here. He's like, if you're down here with yeah. us, kid, it means you fucked up something bad. Yeah. We all got shit we're trying to repent for or whatever. And then the guy's like prodding and prodding and prodding. Like, yeah, how did. Max, get down here, blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like finally had it up. And he's like, look, his wife and kid were moited. <laughs> because we should say this is this is a New York City set motion picture. It sure is. Filmed exclusively in Toronto. So you got fucking Canadians up and down this cast. Um, props, though, for them filming a lot of it outside on location. Because, look, it looks better than a Marvel movie in that regard. Sorry. It's true. Um, but, yeah, actual, he's like, yeah, there's, there's a ground and sky that you could see real sometimes. Bu- real fucking buildings they're standing in front of they do love uh this uh flurries of snow which i was like is this cg oh dude some of the worst fake snow i've ever yeah. seen in this movie yeah. there's, a, there's a scene where like someone opens a window or it's where it's like max Payne raids uh i mean we'll get to it he raids like donald logue's office at the police station and then like jumps out the window and when they break the door down it's like oh he got away and there is like shredded pieces of paper flying through the window it looks terrible Mm -hmm. because it's like big enormous flakes of snow the entire film yeah yep Mm -hmm. well there's there's that shot where lupino the one of the bigger villains is like outside naked and Mm -hmm. it's definitely supposed to be like a rutger hauer in blade runner shot sure the snow coming down and him like hanging off some balcony somewhere this dude's doing a lot of looking off balconies in this movie. It's yes. kind of like his main function. Um, but we see a little bit of like what Max Payne's getting into here after hours. And of course, it's your thing of like, yeah, he's writing this desk during, you know, work time, but he is still investigating, you know, trying to solve his family's murder. So he's like walking in the subway, like baiting tweakers to mug him so he can get information from them. Yeah, and I mean, like, the funny thing is, like, because what we find out is that his family was murdered three years ago, and only through the events of this film does he start being like, yo, maybe I should check out where she worked, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's just, like, going into alleyways, beating up fucking meth heads, hoping to get information for three years. Yeah, yeah. you're not wrong, dude. It's like, how good of a detective <laughs> is Max Payne in the first place? He's a terrible detective. Yes. I mean, if you meet Chris O'Donnell and you trust him, immediately get out the door. Get oh, the fuck man. out of here. It's He's evil. Look at this man. Yeah, uh, he. I, I got to tell you, man, he's too old for it now. I said this last night in the group chat. He's too old for it now, but if you got Chris O'Donnell back then maybe maybe a couple years younger but i think oh wait o'donnell still could have done it he could play that total rat fuck matt gatz looks mm. exactly yes. yeah, like him in this yeah, movie he does. you give if you gave chris o'donnell matt gatz a stupid fucking he was in butthead sure. haircut well, you know what? i mean that guy's gonna eventually be president so maybe he could I, play him like as an older that's gentleman. yeah that's the point. problem is is that i don't know how you get how you quagmire a jaw like that <laughs> like that's what you need to do the, 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 chris o'donnell would have to uh, let out his jaw for by about two to three inches <laughs> to get a matt gates um, oh man so you're when you're talking about like he's, he's trying to get these um these users to fight him in this subway station he then goes to the subway bathroom a fictional oh, thing oh, we would please. all love to use and, and, totally a, a new york city 
Yeah, a New York City subway bathroom in 2008. Get out of here, fantasy I, yeah, film. It does. They don't exist anymore. They're There's more realistic up. shit in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> true. One of those talking trees. I could see that happening before a, a, a New York City <laughs> subway restroom reopening. <laughs> Swords and shields are made every day. And Let's what just is, be honest. That's true. That's and true. what is Gollum if not just a fentanyl addict, right? Please. That's true. That's His true. precious absolutely. is the fent. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the uh, the Mount Doom is the toilet you 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 flush the drugs down. Uh, so he's beating the shit out of these dudes, and one guy gets away, but like he's high on this stupid drug, so all these evil angels are bothering him, and like he just gets hit by a subway, which is pretty cool. You better believe I rewound that scene, saying what the fuck just happened. Like literally, because I, <laughs> I never saw this movie, and I you know I didn't play the game that much, but I was like. Hold on, what's happening in this week? Like, these <laughs> these gobbleeds are like coming down from the sky, scratching at this guy that he gets by a train. And I'm like, I guess it was a hallucination, and I could just put that to bed. But they keep coming back. Mamma mia, <laughs> one of my hot, hot girls was taken by a gobbleed. <laughs> oh, it's a hot, hot goblin. They took my hot, hot girl. <laughs> Man, this drug that, is... Talk about a Mario party. Get some hot, hot girls in there. Now we're talking. Oh, sure, <laughs> totally. That might be the uh, Smash Brothers then, right? <laughs> oh, my Lord in heaven. Uh... This fucking drug shit is pretty stupid. So uh, these guys don't seem like that they were in the army and being officially no. tested on. No. So I guess our we, uh, we come to find that Marine Corps like st- sergeant who's now hanging out in a uh, nightclub. He has like zero time in this movie. It'd be cool to develop maybe sure. the villain at all. Yeah. No, it's well, it's a nonsense. weird thing where like you, this whole movie, this guy Lupino is like the fake villain yes. because Bo Bridges is the real villain. So what you do learn in, in the end of the movie though, is that Bo Bridges is, it's like something, something. Yeah. We just put the drug out on the streets. And I was like, the fuck did you do that for? Uh, Bo yeah, it was, it, it's limited. It's like quaaludes or something like the, you know, they're not going to keep making this stuff. Even at the, at a part at the party, they show some blonde woman, like just kind of like taking some of it. That like all these like demons come out. And she's like, Oh, this sucks. And I'm like, dude, yeah, dude, you wouldn't take this drug twice. It's it's uh, thank you. It's <laughs> such a stupid. We could just get right into it. Max Payne goes to a party uh, at this dude Trevor's house, who's like some old informant guy, and he's walking around over. And yeah, there's this one part where like the movie like continues on, but the camera stays in this room to watch this girl do this drug, yes. and she's like so hip to take it. And then yeah, like she lay <laughs> she lays back on the bed. Like you just have a you know a killer hit of something, you know, and you're ready for it to kick in. And then it's just like whoa <laughs> and she's like, oh no. What, what, la- what later, the fuck? It is a one and done drug. Later in the movie they suggest like the the whole thing was that it was a combat drug. Sure. Like, that and like when you see the interview with Lupino before he becomes, you know, a, a psycho. He's just like, I, I just feel like uh, nothing could touch me. I feel so great. I'm like, where the fuck is that feeling? Yes. Anywhere in anybody else except this guy. That's that's, the, that's another fucking blink and you miss well, it line, you know, though, Chris, because he's like, again, I think it's fucking Bo Bridges is like, yeah, like the people we gave it to, like the vast majority of them freak the fuck out. But like a few people here and there, it did what it was intended to do. So it's like Lupino and then maybe a few other dudes, but everyone else has totally adverse so, effects this, including max Payne. they are warriors you know that mm. dude so that it's 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 I like see. this nazi crank developed for that kind of guy specifically it'd be cool but, if you knew a buddy who was like addicted to this drug and like every time he's just like oh man i was watching oceans 11 last night i fucking <laughs> hate when all those demons showed up in oceans 11. Like, dude you gotta get off that drug man <laughs> it's not it's not in the movie Man, I was so fucked up on the blue stuff last <laughs> night. I was watching Constantine, and it was totally fine. <laughs> you can't like try to follow it at all. Like literally, when Olga, like uh, he meets Olga Kurilenko, yeah. Kurilenko, yeah, yes. yeah, he meets her at this thing, and her whole thing she keeps on saying is like, "Oh, I need the drug to keep the demons away. I That's know. how they stay no. away." Okay, and I'm like, okay, so nothing makes sense. Fantastic, <laughs> <laughs> Olga Kurilenko. Objection, Your Honor. She gets the hammer in this movie, and parlance, the hammer is who gets the end in the credits. 
that's got to be Bo Bridges. Yeah, of like, course. Dude's been working Stunning. since the 70s. And, oh, like, he's like, just like third build. I'm like, no, 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 no. If he's Ooh. in the movie this much and he's kind of the secret villain, it's and Bo I, Bridges and everyone goes yep. home happy. Ma- maybe I could uh, I see an argument for Chris O'Donnell if he was a character. <laughs> yes, But exactly. he is not a character. Nope. Therefore, it do- doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, Olga Kirilenko playing a creatively named character, Natasha. Mm. Ah. Mm, uh, and she comes into this movie all wasted. Uh, and she's like, uh, I thought I knew all <laughs> of Max's <Mix's> friends. <laughs> it's, it is a hilarious Beautiful delivery voice. here. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, sweetheart. I only get hard for my dead wife. <laughs> You're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, yeah, masturbate to uh, old videotapes of old birthdays we had for the baby. Yeah, it's, I got to fast sad. forward. I got to fast forward through all the parts where it's just the baby on screen. <laughs> she, always, she always wore a hot dress on those birthdays, you know. Oh, man, his fantasies about his family and later on when he's like thinking he's going to go meet them and be in heaven again. I want to ask you guys your thoughts on this. Now, if you have a baby in heaven, does mm-hmm. that, you know, not like birthed in heaven, but your baby dies, it goes to heaven. Does it grow up? Can you go up there and hang out? Like, does That's it become a great an question. Adult? I think it becomes a baby ghost for sure for a little Absolutely. while at least. Yeah, baby but ghost. then that's like, it's just uh, babies are so dependent on you and a baby ghost, one that won't die and go away if you don't take care of it. Like, that sounds like a nightmare. Well, the, the baby ghost problem is that we are seeing less and less castles being built uh, in, <laughs> in this modern day. And we need more uh-huh. castles for baby ghosts. They yep. don't do well in apartments. I'll be honest. They just don't. They don't seem to <laughs> really flourish there. Like the movie Baby Ghosts starring uh, Joe Estevez. <laughs> what? There is a movie called Baby Ghost. And I know it was done in Rift Tracks, but I watched it movie a decade ago. Uh, it is an insane Joe Estevez movie where there is a baby ghost haunting an ap- apartment building, and it's got a great theme song <laughs> that goes, I'm a baby ghost. Now I'm <laughs> free. Yeah, it's this, it's, this uh, VHS cover or whatever looks amazing. Yeah, my wife and I linked to it. My wife and I found it like a 1 a.m. one night. And like, again, this is years before Rift Tracks did it, and uh, it changed my life. It is the most boring, bad movie you'll ever watch, though. But I thought you were going to say that time you experienced a baby ghost in your old place in Brooklyn, Steve. Oh, well, yeah, that was just, I think that was oh. just something a uh, baby the great... ghost experience. Please, please <laughs> yes. walk us through your haunting. <laughs> no, I think it was just a vet, but it was just like every night at like midnight, there would be like a wailing through coming through my vents. And I'm like, that's fucking creepy. Man. Dude, you were Max Payne. <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of Max Payne. Uh, another, uh, actor who I think is pretty good. That's totally wasted in this movie is Mila Kunis. Mm -hmm. Uh, she is (sighs) Natasha's sister and is also something, something very powerful crime boss. Absolutely. You got it dead on right there. Question mark. Don't don't need any more explanation. What are you talking about? You you don't need no, because she's just a heavily involved mafia figure. Playing Mona Sachs. (laughs) (laughs) In my notes, I have, is she terrible? Because that's the problem with, I think Mila Kunis is really specifically like really good and good things and really bad and bad things. And I Uh don't, it's, she's one of, she's one of those actresses and that's fine. Comedies. Yes. Comedy, I think she's she, great and, in, Bla- I think. and she couldn't Black Swan too. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think true. she's very funny, but also like watching this, like I would watch her do some kind of like John Wick esque thing. Like if she if she was casting that fourth John Wick as something, like because mm-hmm. like she is like very natural with the gunplay and shit. Like it was all working, but like it's just not a character. No. And at this point, I mean, it's two thousand eight. Like she was as big as she's ever been. Like yeah. I d- and it's just like you're in this movie for two seconds. Literally, the movie abandons her. She shows up impossibly in the final action sequence. Yeah. Impossibly, <laughs> yeah, she, really- she shows up and then vanishes just as quickly. Yeah, she really does. It's great. She like takes out uh, Bo Bridges number two, who you didn't realize was a character until they really <laughs> amp him up. You're like, whoa, okay? okay. Yeah, it's kind of... It's a real hey, whatever screenplay. Mm-hmm. Hey, whatever. And so, uh, yeah... Mona Sachs is all pissed off that her sister Natasha Sachs is at this party. Seems like there's been some sort of sobriety issues here. Sure. Something, something. So uh, and then this is one Mona Sachs and one Nat Sachs. <laughs> that's Sorry. right. It's uh, just such a name. Uh, Sachs. Yeah. 
it's got to be like a shortened thing because they're both supposed to be well, yeah, like, like Russian in this movie. Saxonova yeah. or something. Oh, oh so it, it, in this party, we also meet Trevor, one of his uh, uh, lowly guys. I, I only noticed this guy because it's played by Andrew Friedman, who is the pervert uncle from Captain the Freedmans? Uh, so, <laughs> yes, actually. No, no, was, they, Jesus, no that, that was a pervert dad and son, wasn't yes. it? Well, I, I think they captured that guy. He wasn't able to be in movies anymore. No more yeah. computer <laughs> courses for that bozo. Was it before 2008, though, Steve? That's the question. That's a question. good question. That's a great uh, question. No, uh, from It's Always Sunny in Pil- uh, Philadelphia, Charlie oh, Davis, yes. a, a weirdo uncle who's like rubbing his thighs. Oh, yes. and oh Uncle, uncle Jack. Jack. Yeah. 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 I love that guy. <laughs> good yeah, this. This dude's been in a ton of shit, but yeah, I was like, oh, Uncle Jack, that's appropriate. Um, yeah, and he's just another guy that kind of comes to nothing. He was a he was a former Max Payne informant, we're told, uh, is the idea there. Um, but this is the scene where yeah, he follows Natasha into this back room. She gets high on the blue powder drug. And Ma- uh, Mark Wahlberg here is noticing, like, there's all these people with wing tattoos, including this guy Lupino. Mm-hmm. What's that about, bro? Whoa, look at that. Only one wing. That's fucked up. How are you going to fly away with just one stupid tattoo, bro? I may be. I may actually adjust my detective strategy of beating up ram, random homeless people, which is what I've been doing for three years. <laughs> I suppose I can stop beating up the homeless and follow a lead. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Eric <laughs> Adams, take note. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that guy. But fucking rank choice voting. Fuck you, New York City. But so like it's she goes back with him and he's like trying to get information out of her, I guess, is the idea. And this is when she's like, I will have sex with you. And he's like, No, bro, you're not my dead wife, my beautiful angel dead wife. Dude, the funny thing is though, she doesn't know that it's a dead wife situation. Oh, yeah. And she's just like, Oh yes, it's just someone who broke your heart and not here anymore. How about I be her? You close your eyes and fuck me and <laughs> And I be her for you. And I, I was like, like lady, <laughs> good plan. this is the dead wife you're talking about. He's going to get pissed about this. At John Morris camera, I mean, it is about as uh, uh, tasteful as Al Bundy. Mm, it's just yeah. like, <laughs> take a good look, Costanza. Every fucking, every turn, every cut for what, as soon as she enters the fucking frame. There is, though, a really, like, you are embarrassing yourself by trying to do this shot but also keep it PG-13 because like she takes everything off except her underwear and she lays down in the bed and like, you know, in reality, she'd be laying there just topless like, let's fucking do this. But she's just got like the part of the under sheet of the bed just draped over her. Yeah. It's, it's like a pillowcase. Like, it's so weird. I was like, you yeah. fucking undid the bed just <laughs> to do like you unmade the bed just to do this. But- she sees like Max Payne, and it's like she sees what Zero Pussy does to a motherfucker. So <laughs> she's trying to help him. Uh, she's trying. I guess that's true. That uh, but true. Like, listen, trying. I don't know uh, how horny you can get when you're with someone who's hepped up on Scarecrow's fear toxin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm fucking an, a devil angel or whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, awesome. Exactly. This is great. That I mean, I'm fucking a Valkyrie, bro. I, 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 cool. I don't know. I would feel pretty. I, I'd I'd get my ego would be boosted pretty well if a woman was being. I'm seeing demons. I'm seeing <laughs> angels. Yeah, I'm dude. seeing a fire above me. Your Just, life's flashing before your eyes as we're <laughs> getting in there. Just, I mean, I don't know, good. Chris. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're 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 fucking doing the deed and if it's like oh i'm seeing heaven i guess that's one thing but if the screams are oh i'm seeing demons that's not a great response i don't know man i mean some people might be into that <laughs> yeah i think chris is on to something the burned <laughs> angels you know just they, not everybody likes the the, the feathery type they like that's the true. ash that's, in the that's burn true. Wahlberg gets in a great line here and it's something I've always wanted to yell at somebody but he's trying to get her out of the apartment and like she's kind of not she's like wait a minute seriously you don't want to fuck me this is the first time this has ever happened to me and he's like get your shit and get out and I'm like oh man get your shit and get out great thing to say to somebody and I guess she steals his wallet even though I don't know she's like a mob boss of some kind. I mean, I guess I don't well, know. Well, fuck this drug. guy. This guy, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's she's, true. He's now bruising her ego, so. Yes, and- yes, I am loaded. I don't need the money, but hey, 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 look <laughs> at him try to use bank card tomorrow morning. <laughs> Fucking loser, widow. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he is kind of a loser widow, to be quite honest. Oh, yeah. big time. I think that's a widower, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a widower. Oh, yeah. uh, but she just gets she gets got by Lupino here. I mean, I think we see more of these demon things. And again, I'm watching this movie because it's not explained just yet. I'm like, are these things real? Because if these things are real, and I'm like, kind of yep. just like gripping the back of my couch, going to break it for five seconds. Like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> It was a thing where I'm watching it and I was like, I was like, I had the text drafted to you guys, like some sort of like, are they fucking serious? Just in case yes. these things turned out to be real. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that, so whatever, he, she's dead the next day. But why again? Like, why Why was she killed? Why? To, what's his motivation to kill her? That's a great it's, question. I, he does, right? it, he doesn't make any sense. Killer. Yeah, he it's, doesn't make any sense. They say that he's making an army at some point, and I'm like, what is he doing? And then, like, that goes nowhere. However, <laughs> like, is Bo Bridges telling him, oh, you got to kill this girl and frame Max Payne? Probably not. See, there's no plot to this. There's no, no, like, what is this dude who's got this nightclub full of this Valker drug? What is his end game? What is he doing? Yes. Why is he doing any of this shit? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like, I mean, I hadn't thought about it, Steve, but I think of the notion of like, and again, the movie doesn't say this, so it's just speculative, but like, that seems like the best motivation for why Lupino would kill her is to do this like framing of Max Payne. Sure. But, well, you know, to, because Bro Bridges is like, uh oh, he finally thought about maybe investigating <laughs> his wife's job. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, here's I, a, here's the report. Uh, Max Payne, uh, Max Max Payne beat up six homeless people last night. Excellent news! <laughs> like he's, every day, he's just excited because he's just on the entirely wrong track. Things are looking up. Well, gotta they, say, couldn't be the healthcare industry, bro. I mean, they're heroes. They're saving lives every day. <laughs> That's right. They are. Um, we should talk about the. Did anyone else notice that the blue? medicine which by the way is not injected which is kind of cowardly you just drink it uh it looks very much like the blue liquid used in maxi pad commercials you know what i mean yep. to show yep. absorbency <laughs> like, yep you're, yes. oh my god yep <laughs> absolutely 100 percent correct i didn't think about that till right now and i'll, I'll tell you i've always kind of wanted to drink that blue liquid. <laughs> well, that, dude, that, then you'll see fucking dragons and shit <laughs> but here's the thing here's the thing you great point about not injecting it right it's ingest to to get it going but then why Oh, why? Later in the movie, when they go to this, du- like, whatever, Green, John Green, or whatever, he and Mila Owen Kunis Green. go to find Owen Green. They go to find this dude, and he's in some fucking tweaker pad or whatever. It looked like the beginning of um, uh, Denzel and Lithgow. What's that movie? The Ricochet. Yeah, where they go in that, ha- the, like, the drug yes. den house and Ricochet. Oh, yeah. Kind of reminded me of that. Uh, yeah. The dude has, and I guess it's just like, so he's doing this stuff, but also maybe you know, uh, pushing needle drugs also. Cause like he holds up his arm and he's got the wing tattoo. Like Mark Wahlberg notices the wing tattoo again and there's track marks all over his arm. So I was like, are you also shooting this shit or is that just, it's just a separate drug, drug addiction? He's probably wanting yeah. heroin to come down from all these fucking rabid <laughs> demons and shit, dude. You know what I, mean? yeah, I guess yeah. that's true. That's true. And now to Steve's point, I mean, you know, huffing a maxi pad, that could be a, an interesting drug for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think they did that in the 70s. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's they me. did a lot of things in the 70s. I'm a tough as nails detective. My name is Max Pad. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Maxie. My friends do. <laughs> Tampon uh, squad. <laughs> <laughs> we keep shooting this guy, but he's not bleeding. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like something's absorbing the blood. <laughs> it's awful. Oh, no, it's uh, good. It's uh, so whatever. The next morning, Max Payne meets up with Donald Logue. Again, another dude. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, Donald Logue. Yes. Nope, in this movie for eight seconds. Uh, he's playing Alex Balder, an old partner of Max Payne's. They had a falling out because Max Payne basically felt like this dude wasn't working his dead wife's case hard well, enough. Yeah, because Jeez. probably Alex was being like, it's definitely BB. <laughs> and uh, the corporation, they 100% did this. They have the power. They have the means. He probably, She probably fucking saw something she shouldn't. You're not doing it enough, bro. There's no way. It's got to be some junkies, bro. <laughs> bro, they are a pharmaceutical company. Do no harm. <laughs> Man, it's like, what does this guy care? I mean, you're not going to bring her back. Like, whatever yeah. at this point. Three years, I say, you know, let's sleeping dogs lie. That's my, exactly. my opinion. How, and, and Max Payne, if you're still sore about it, 
Time for the urn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go join him, you piece of shit. Why don't you raise a baby in heaven? No, yeah, it definitely can't be a doctor, bro. They take the hypocrite's oath. <laughs> yeah, sure fucking do. Raise a baby in heaven. Wasn't that that fucking shithead Eric Clapton song? Oh, yeah. Because well, his uh, his kid uh, made, a, made a leap of faith there. This kid was like, oh, fuck, my dad is Eric Clapton. Oh, God. Uh, so, yeah, he's just like, uh, hey, listen, man, we uh, you got to come with me. There's something I need you to take a look at. They go to... Uh, where Olga has been laid out in the alley, and he's like, "Hey, so your fucking wallet is on this dead girl. What's going and on?" And the dead here? girl is in pieces, and no one can even recognize her at first. I think uh, 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 Max Payne identifies her by the tattoo. Yes, mm. yeah, that's my favorite uh, metal brand, bro. <laughs> She's the same ink. I went to the At The Gates show with her, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. This is, in 2008, this is very, very popular. What is also Oh, crazy. shit, dude, I saw her at a glass jaw show last night. <laughs> <laughs> but that fucking tattoo, I mean, what, what we come to find Donald Logan has, has found or whatever, it's like, this girl's got the same tattoo as your, your, you know, and it's like, why would, like, so your wife just comes home with a mystery tattoo, and is the pharmaceutical company putting that on her? Is no, she how no, involved? No, 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 no. The the wife didn't have it. But Donald Logue is looking at the crime scene photos again because he has seen the wing tattoo on Olga Kirilenko, right. and he's like, "Where have I seen that before?" And he's looking through the crime scene photos. When the when Wahlberg or when Max Payne like found the the wife dead, there was like that dude. There was like a couple of dudes still in the apartment, and he murdered one of them right and that he finds the photo and that guy the dead assassin oh, had the tattoo yeah because yeah, he well they sir, he, in the photo see this is the it's a visual medium so he's got <laughs> a photo of i guess that guy's arm and it's yes. circled yes. and it says just like michelle yeah. yeah and i'm like oh so she had that tattoo as well this is an image conveying something to me no, no, Got no. He it. just played bass and pig destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, also, like, what a lame thing to do. It's like getting a, a, a cannabis leaf tattooed on you, man. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude, I love weed. It's like, I know. Yeah. That's but if anyone listening has dumb. that, I think it's quite cool. It's very cool if you have it. <laughs> so uh Donald Logue is is quickly dispatched. Uh is he is is do we does Max Payne comes and finds his body? Is his is he decapitated? I think his his throat is cut. That sounds right. And that's was yeah, and that's the problem. This movie is PG thirteen. Let's just do the mm, R for. Well, I guess because I mean, literally, because it's video game adaptation, you want as many like fourteen year old boys to show up and see this movie as possible. Yeah, a video However, game that came out seven years <laughs> yeah, prior. Really I, I think point. those kids are old enough to see an R rated movie now. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it. it's just so funny, man. Because it's like you know, I mean, we still the film industry hems and haws over getting a PG thirteen over an R anyway. And like, I got news for you. In 2008, just as it was, just as it is now in 2022, nobody gives a fuck about film ratings. Like you rate this movie R, yes. Kids under 17 that want to see it will fucking find a way to see it. Like a parent is not going to give a shit. Like mm -hmm. the whole rate, it's just bunk. It's just fucking bunk. Yeah, there's definitely been at least one kid out there who got on the apps, their their parents' TV, and is just going through and go on Shutter, and somehow. Yeah. Watch most of society. Oh, sure. And they should. That's definitely honestly. happen. And they should. Is society totally. on? I, I actually changed my settings to MA on Disney Plus. Can I now watch society or? Yes, <laughs> Disney Plus is now presenting the yes. shunting in all its uncensored glory. Oh, it's no. A four hour cut. I, oh, no. I opened the porthole to the society universe. <laughs> this is oh, going to be bad. Dude, if it was just Benedict Cumberbatch's just face on a fucking ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I I should, oh, yeah. I should have to go up my own ass or anything like that <laughs> you they, know you help one little teenager with an incredibly small problem and now all of a sudden my face is on an ass <laughs> oh man like the fuck hell universe that would be great to explore. yes uh oh so yeah so yeah he finds donald Logue dead and then he's like oh wait a minute is that my ex-partner dead on my own house <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> and then like just some dude just starts beating the shit out of him and this is i have to say like yeah pg-13 rating uh, but like he gets his ass handed to him yes. in this a, a house fight and it's kind of awesome it is it rules i wrote it down like this is my favorite part of the movie obviously it's just mm. really getting this shit kicked out of him 
Uh, and so he wakes up in the hospital. And this is so funny because, like, I wasn't really super looking at the opening credits, so I didn't even notice, like, uh, Bo Bridge's name at the top. And so, like, they cut, and he wakes up in the hospital bed, and it just, like, kind of cuts farther out. And you see who's sitting next to him, and it's just like, bam, Bo Bridges. Yeah. yeah. And the most <sighs> Sin City part of this whole movie is his hair. <laughs> this hair. Ooh, Bo Bridges' hair? Yeah, Bo Bridges' hair yeah. looks like it was a portal from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man. <laughs> it was just, like, it's so cartoonish in this fucking thing. I mean, the, the, the saturated color also, but, like, man, this, like, took me by surprise. Um, and so we get a thing, just a quick cut in, like, this is the movie. I I gotta say, I rarely, I rarely figure things out way in advance, but like, I called this movie from like, yeah, th this next oh, yeah. shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chris yeah. O'Donnell's like reading a newspaper and it's like brutal murder in Harlem, drug dealer suspected. And he's like, go. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. goes and, like, shows this old lady who's, like, evilly sitting in a limousine, and she's like, well, we'll have to do something about this. And I was like, all right, so the pharmaceutical yeah. company's crooked, and they killed his wife. Got it. Oh, what's that fucking almost an hour and a half left? Perfect. And oh, yeah, when the second you see Bo Bridges, you're like, well, he's in on it. Like, and not even, I mean, it doesn't even, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what, like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, law and order rules. Like, well, you, you yep. got Bo Bridges, he has to be Yeah. In. Who could also? Who else could possibly be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, he's the only star left. <laughs> Unless like Mila Kunis actually somehow was like, yeah, maybe. You, you double back and like, oh, she's like, oh no, I killed my own oh, sister for some reason. Yep. Or yeah. maybe we find out. Here's the other star in this movie. Uh, 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 so Mark Wahlberg uh, uh, insists on going to Alex's uh, funeral, even though everybody is certain he killed him. <laughs> yes. Which is and, a, well, he's in the hospital from that altercation or whatever, and. All right. And we also stop it, by the office and pick you up a fucking shirt for the great funeral we're going it's to. It's nearly seven hours later that they're putting this dude in the ground. And literally everybody, like people who don't know him are like, oh, you know, he killed his partner. You know, that's it. You hear that bad? Yeah. Bad. And like everybody's <laughs> doing it. So he goes to this funeral. I love this part. And Nelly for pop singer yeah. Nelly Furtado could, believe it. could not believe it. Brings down the house, chewing him out. In the oh, best, it's great. Uh, this is the uh, you said the beating up is the best scene. This to me, this dressing down mm. is so wonderful. Well, for me, it's the so end long. credits, the end credits, also a, a wonderful <laughs> moment. Actually, no, it's great because he goes. I mean, like, but first he goes up to him, like, Krista, and he's like, kind of say, "I'm sorry for your loss." She slaps him, and then someone in the background goes, "Jesus," <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> <my friend. laughs> and then she, and then she like gives him the business, like, "I can't believe," blah blah blah. You know he. And it, it's not even like she thinks you killed him, but it's more like you weren't his friend anymore. Like you can't always gave him shit about your dumb dead wife, you piece of shit, Max Payne, and fucking hate right. guts. She's like, you made him think he hadn't done enough. Yes. And he felt fucking horrible guilt over the, the murder of the family and everything. And then, th dude, this was the nuclear fucking button here. She goes, and what has Max Payne done? except bring misery to everyone who ever cared for him. That's true. And I was like, fucking touchdown, Nelly for <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That guy goes out again. Oh, Jesus. Oh, two it of would, them. <laughs> it would be awesome if you fucking looked at the credits on IMDb and it's just like whoever the fuck is. <laughs> guy who says Jesus at wake. <laughs> Because that should be credited, that delivery. Absolutely. I, I, every time, I honestly bring it back for every time someone gets hit by a shotgun shell and goes flying. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Which happens a lot. It, I will it say. Sure also, does. The shotgun, note. man, the shotgun impact physics in this movie are kind of great. They're fun. I'm, I'm, Bullet I'm always, time. Always a shotgun <laughs> fan. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, big time, this, yeah. This is when I yelled out, what? In my oh, own yep. home, which is him and Bo Bridges are leaving. He gets, you know, gets kicked out of his best friend's funeral. Kind of a rough week for Max Payne. And <laughs> on his way out, a car pulls up, and Chris Ludacris Bridges gets out. Man, and it's like you're coming with me, Max Payne. I'm internal affairs. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you're not. You're gonna. You're going to use a computer to steal his car or some shit. That's, you're I, from the Fast and Furious franchise. Thank you. Because there's a couple. Th like, Chris, he's fun in the Fast and Furious movies. That's fine. He's a fun rapper. The thing is, like, I believe him as a rapper. I believe him as a car thief. I believe him as like a, as a, even a comic relief guy. 
I'll believe him as a Best Buy shift change manager. I'll buy that. <laughs> sure. Infernal, Internal Affairs? No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. No, every, ma'am. Everyone signed up for this, I guess, because they thought this was going to be like a big franchise. Oh, sure, yes. Yeah. I didn't yeah. notice this. I read this on Wikipedia afterwards, and I didn't have time to go back before we started, but apparently there's even a post credit scene in there this. There is. Oh, yep. I oh you do. better believe it. Uh, we'll save it, but fucking hell they really thought they had something here like well, that's michael keaton you- comes in he's like huh, what am i doing <laughs> in this universe weird <laughs> hey hey max Payne, you want to go fight spider-man <laughs> I was fucking just, donkey shit I was, that movie i was just in another cell now i'm in another cell <laughs> <laughs> pretty useless huh see you guys next time well, that's like, you know, like Nelly Furtado must have like fired her management after this. Like, oh, sure. You told me to get into movies because it would make me popular. I could have just done a fucking horror movie and you had me in this shit. Well, that's I didn't I didn't look it up, but has she done much else acting? Because no. I got to she's actually pretty good. Yeah, she, yeah. Gives the, she gives the business. It's good look now. Um, so, oh, man, I got to say it wasn't my favorite part of the movie. I will 100 percent point that out when we get to it. Because it's it's one of the greatest things I've ever I, seen Mark I, Wahlberg do. I, I called it. I, I was like, oh, that's the fart editor's talking about it. <laughs> and, and you're right, by the way. But, <laughs> dude, I had a massive LOL when they are. So Ludacris is like, all right, like we're going to go downtown to the IAB office and I got to talk to you about this. He shows him a crime scene photo of Donald Logue and the expression on Donald Logue's face is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it is like, like it, it's as if someone... Uh, threw you a surprise party, and the second like everyone yelled surprise, someone slashed your throat. <laughs> like, cause he, cause the look on his face is like, hey, what? Like, it's just they really needed to do like a couple of options, mm, maybe yeah. like one that looks a little less totally funny. No, yeah, th- it's like if there was an SNL sketch, he's like, he was scared to death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're totally right. That's exactly right. I mean, it is just, it's a hilarious reaction to having your throat cut. Kind of love it. Um, and, but, oh, so, yeah, oh, go ahead. Steve. No, no, whatever. Like, he just basically tells this guy to go fuck himself. He's going to get his union lawyer. And, like, that's kind of it. And, like, yeah. the ludicrous thread goes nowhere. Sure does well, not uh, go uh, anywhere. Yeah. I do have to point out that his name is Jim mm-hmm. Bravura. Oh yeah, I'm dude. like, just call him Johnny Bravo. Just get it over with. Just <laughs> yep. fucking break the fucking, you know, get into trouble legally. Just do it. Like, it also would be hilarious if Ludacris just shows up in this movie. And he's got the Johnny Bravo haircut, yeah, and sunglasses, and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> Why not? Fuck it. Doing a bad Elvis impersonation. I'm happy with all of this. <laughs> He'd be better in the role of Johnny Bravo than Oosh. he would be in this movie. We should do Johnny Bravo on AD. It's been been a oh, long. Oh, that's a great yeah. idea. Oh yeah, I haven't watched that. Uh, cartoon in a long I'm time. sure he's a problematic fave. Mm-hmm. He might get canceled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is true. Bat, 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 bat. Which is de- bat. definitely a real thing. So look out for that. <laughs> uh, so he goes to the fucking uh, police department and all these homicide cops are like, what is this fucking piece of shit doing here? <laughs> and he's like walking through and everybody's like spitting on him uh, and hissing yeah. like fucking... <laughs> Jesus carrying the cross in the street, man. Everyone's just <laughs> giving this guy the business. And uh, he fucking r- runs into the office. And this is where he finds the photo that's like, same as Michelle? Oh, question right. mark. Is this where he also yes. gets a, in, he gets a little brief encounter with uh, uh, oh, yeah. Dean Sanchez from the Stalked by My Doctor colon The Patient's Revenge movie, which is our Patreon offering on Once of a Lifetime this month on Patreon.com slash we a movies. Now, Eric, can I ask you, is Dean Sanchez also known as Dean the Golden Shoulder Sanchez? Because the fucking <laughs> wailing he does on this fucking door. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. He's thrown this shoulder as if he's a football line, linebacker. He's well, just going in there. Well, that's the funny thing is like Max Payne walks into the homicide office. There's 2,000 homicide detectives just looking at this guy, calling him a piece of shit. And walks through them like one of them needs to put a hand on like, yo, dude, you can't be in here. But he gets yep. to the office and then like he, the door is locked like, well, there's nothing we can do now. It's like, no, you should have stopped it beforehand. <laughs> yep, exactly. Like, why did you just let him barge into the office like that yeah. in the first place? Well, like, He's wanted for murder. Well, uh, he lost sort his of. wife. I mean, come on, he lost his wife. Let him do whatever. <laughs> They're fucking on, milking that for years. <laughs> it's been three insane. years back. Get over it. <laughs> Hey, here's the thing about Dean Sanchez, by the way. The actor's name is Rick Rico Simonini. And I think he must be friends with this director or something because he's in this. 
Uh, he also turns up as a colonel in A Good Day to Die Hard of all motion Ooh. pictures. That's uh, and I just texted you guys so I wouldn't lose it while I was looking at his profile. He was in a movie in 2020 with Eric Roberts that's called My Last Best Friend. Whoa. Uh, the plot revolves around two identical looking men, Walter and the nameless protagonist. Oh, it is, I, I believe just from doing... looking at it. Yep. yep. Oh, my God. Two Eric exactly right. Roberts? It's another two Eric Roberts movie. Oh, oh my boy. God. I love this. We got to find it. We got to fucking we find it. Absolutely have to. There's, the only thing better than Eric Roberts is two of them. It's just like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Look, the problem with doing a show like ours is like it turns into like the Odyssey and like you, you find your your path on eric roberts island and then you just start doing <laughs> eric roberts movies all the sure, time yeah, and you man. forgot oh, yeah. why you even got there and where you were trying to go and it's like been five <laughs> years and all you've done is review eric roberts movies that's very yep. possible yeah i mean that's how max Payne feels like when he's beating up these poor men in the subway station what? yeah there's the three eric roberts sirens <laughs> who call you and they're like hey hi hi <laughs> i got almost 700 movies 500 of them are terrible and they all have the clamshell bras too, of course. They have to go all out. Man, if he had 200 great movies, that'd be something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to yeah, say, that's dude, true. that's a little generous yeah, with that stuff. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Steve, to your point about, like, yeah, uh, you know, doing Eric Roberts movies or whatever, that is a slippery slope. I will gladly slide down, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so he runs out of there. He fucking disappears out this window like Batman, mm. which is hilarious. Well, which, by um, the way, we had, he gotten off an elevator that was still going down to get to this office. It's a real great point. So he jumped out of at least a two story window. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know. I mean, it doesn't uh, bother I Constantine. It's not going to bother him, Eric. I mean, come on. I, guess I so. wasn't paying attention to the elevator continuity, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but you dude, do it was point. there. BB was still going down. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Payne gets caught in an alley by Mina, Mina Kunis. Who, and she's who like, wants to remind people that she's still in the movie? Uh, yes, absolutely. And she does so by saying, we need to talk about my sister. And then just starts pistol whipping him with a machine gun. Yeah. It's kind of funny. This is, a, this is I think, as Sin City as it gets, really. Yes. Well, no, yes. this and there's actually uh, the doc is literally the doc from like the beginning of Sin City with like yeah, Michael Madsen. You got a bad ticker, Hardigan. <laughs> <laughs> and she's dressed, you know, pretty sexily in this yes. scene with the uh, high heels and everything. I still can't get over that name because it's so close to moan sex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a uh, fun pastime for adults only. And my uh, <laughs> sister Orgasma. <laughs> That's right. They're all here in my new game, Hot Hot Girls. <laughs> Get away from my Hot Hot Girls, Luigi. Find your own. <laughs> Go back to your mansion and jerk off. Yoshi, get your tongue out of there. Oh, no. Ball of <laughs> Luigi would fucking clean up. Now, oh, that dude, dude, forget that, it, yeah. He's prime Brooklyn trash, dude. B-D-E on Waluigi, my friends. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, though, with that Waluigi, man, he's giving you something. Mm -hmm. Oh, for oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yep. dude. Yep. It's, it probably it probably just makes like a lightning bolt shape come up on something on your body. <laughs> yeah, it's something. After sex with him, you, it's a it's applause because he gave you the clap. <laughs> <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Someone yeah. liked it. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> while Luigi gives you the blue the blue shell, you think you're in first place, but you're about to lose, dude. Yeah. You're yeah. about to lose. That's Hard. the spiky shell. You didn't know that. <laughs> so she brings him to find this Owen Green dude, and he's tweaking it up, screaming in this tweaker pad, yelling about like they took her up in their wings. They took her up in her wings. Bah! And this is when he's hanging out. He like gets up on a door uh, on a windowsill, and this you see this demon, this like fucking eye Frankenstein looking motherfucker, <laughs> is pulling on the back of him, and you see yep. his nails are like dr being oh! like he's like be he's like trying to hold on, but clearly, yeah. so I mean, I guess it's supposed to be gravity, but like it, you're trying to have it both ways here, and it's worse shit. Yep, especially because like. This moment in particular, like Max Payne starts running at him in slow mo, like, don't do it, bro. I need you to tell me who killed my wife. And you see this fucking Valkyrie thing pull this guy yes. away from the window. Like he goes flying backwards so far that it's not just like he jumped out the window. And I was like, at that moment, I was like, oh, so they 
are real because it just pulls yes. him. But no, definitely not. Definitely not. He does hilariously land on a car, though. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And that's like, so that's there's that. Then they go to the tattoo parlor. This guy's like, oh, hey, man, you want to hear about Norse mythology? This guy kind of looks like Wal- Waluigi a little bit. He this sort of guy, does. <laughs> this guy looks like he did some uh, some ba- backstage work with Nick Cave in the bad. Seats. Oh, definitely. Like, oh, this, this, totally. this guy sounds like a, an actual ghost. <laughs> All I could think about, though, in this because like Mark Wahlberg, like they go into this tattoo parlor and he's looking through the tattoo books, you know, like pictures of things you could get and he's like oh what's that one and this dude launched first of all you don't expect him to have the voice that he does yeah. it's very like deep radio very nice uh kind of voice but he's like those are norse valkyries and he starts going into the history of this thing and all i could think about was chris farley in wayne's world and then afterwards <laughs> like, yeah. mark mark or uh, mike myers is just like wow that security guard was awfully informative <laughs> He's giving him like every uh, piece of information about like, this can, tattoo. Can he do that for every tattoo in there? Like, <laughs> that's a butterfly. Your young <laughs> girls put that on their back, and it stands for. There were ancient butterflies. They came from Indonesia originally, <laughs> and they meant to kill you. Yeah, you. they would pick out the righteous dead, and they always rewarded those who drew the first blood on the battlefield. Because in Norse mythology, which also includes butterflies. You go to hell if you go to sleep and die. You got to die violently, brother. Oh, uh, that tattoo right there? Yeah, that's a Tweety bird kissing an ass. (laughs) Normally, you see those placed on an ass of somebody, so it looks like (laughs) beloved Looney Tune Tweety bird is kissing the person's ass. I would tell you the history of that one, but we don't got all night. Uh, (laughs) But it's some deep, dark, strange stuff, brother. Yep, that there is a Mario from the video game Hot Hot Girls. It's just a regular <laughs> Mario, but he's got a huge erection. Yeah. Yo, bro, can I ask you? Do you know who killed my wife? You know everything. <laughs> it's just so awesome. Um, there's a weird. This comes to absolutely nothing. They cut away from that to like this dude Lupino just like torturing this guy. And, he's, and I was this something about making the army because he kind of just yes. murders this dude. Yeah, I think this is the test. I assume, and this is all my math because this, the movie did tell you this. I assume he gives them the drugs. If they freak out, that he kills them because oh, they're not going to do it. But if, right, they, if right. they if they soldier up, they become one of his army of the undead or something. I got <laughs> it. You know what I just that makes sense. realized? We were doing all those hot hot girls references. <laughs> we never said laying pipe. Oh, yeah. Uh, right? Well, the like... show ain't over yet, motherfucker. You should have worked it in. <laughs> I just did. He's a plumber. Well, He's a plumber. Technically, you worked it in. <laughs> He's a plumber. I could just say something. That's for sure. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you know what joke we should have told? The following. <laughs> Too much emphasis in comedy is made on timing. I, 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 <laughs> Eric, I pride you, myself on having none of it. Eric, what are you, Reddit? Telling me what jokes to make three days later? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Mila Kunis goes to, like, some contact of hers, this dude Lincoln. It's actually the actor Jamie Hector, who fans of The Wire know played Marlo Stanfield for a fashion on that show. Gr- great performance there. He's nah. in this for like two seconds doing some vague West Indian accent. And he tells her like, oh, yeah, like the dude you're looking for is Lupino. He holds up at, are you ready for this, oh, everybody? Boy. The Ragnarok Club. <laughs> Which, when you when we get to the Ragnarok Club, it's even stupider because it's actually mm-hmm. something else. It's like Ragland and Brocco or something, yep. and like the lights on the sign spell out Ragnarok, and I'm like, well, that's even worse. <laughs> I just made a club. That's Ragnarok. my family's old factory. <laughs> it's me, Lorraine Brocco. <laughs> She should have been in this movie. Yeah, yeah, this is Lorraine Bronco in for HGTV. We're redoing this nightclub. (laughs) I bought it for one euro. Now, famously, Ragnarok was the home of many monsters. (laughs) I forgot she bought that villa. Did she get it fixed up nice and whatnot? Oh, she did. I watched that whole series. Everyone was called, but there was a, a like a limited series. Of Lorraine Bronco repairing an Italian house. <laughs> I think it was called This Old Tomato House. Yeah. It, uh, you know. now, now in the basement, because it's an Italian house, it's got Mario and he's plowing his hot, <laughs> hot girls. 
He's laying pipe Mario's down there laying <laughs> pipe in my basement right now. I'm being fucked. <laughs> And his brother Luigi's at the other end. <laughs> oh man! I got the Eiffel Tower from the Mario Brothers. Yeah, Someone absolutely had to have gotten that. It's so oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, like there's been so many Halloweens that have gone by. Oh you, yeah, for you sure. Knows two Mario Brothers got it, got dirty one night. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. And they definitely made the laying pipe joke then, for sure. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, there is a fucking hilarious thing of uh, Max Payne driving to this factory or whatever, and uh, uh, it's it's he's like playing over like a bunch of things people have said to him uh, <laughs> while the you know over the course of the movie, kind of like the Lisa needs braces dental plan mm-hmm. thing, and it's like you know this person, that person, whatever, and then this guy again, the tattoo parlor guy, because his voice is so distinct and rich and different than everybody else's. And it comes out of nowhere, and it's just like, that's a Norse Valkyrie, a soldier's <laughs> angel. <laughs> I fucking love it so much. Uh, but so what does the dealer, Payne goes to like a, he's actually not driving to the club. No, he's going he, to like a storage facility because he it, finds that, he wants, this is where he, yeah, he wants to look at like old stuff from his wife. And this is where he found, <laughs> finds that all of her uh, Aerith files are missing. And he's like, wait a minute evidence <laughs> dude and this is where he notices for the first time that this <laughs> this acer logo has the fucking feather on it yes which i don't know bow bridges like how about you start telling these dudes not to get yep. tattoos of the logo of your crooked pharmaceutical well, company well, this should really prove like max paid before like they make a point of these like now he's a grieving uh you know a widower and uh, sure all this but like he must have been like the worst husband ever. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like, oh, oh, definitely. If, if you didn't pick up that this feather thing was just from the folders that were on your fucking dining room table <laughs> every fucking day for the last goddamn three years. Like, yep. I just, I don't under, he must have been just like, yeah, babe, you're doing whatever you're doing. I don't fucking care. I got a murder to fucking solve. There's Get the no fuck way out of my face. She has to be happier dead than alive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, he finds that, uh, his wife's former supervisor was a guy named Jason Colvin, which we learn is, uh, Chris O'Donnell. Um, and he fucking goes to Chris O'Donnell's office. Like, this is pretty much, yeah, this is where we're at, right? Yeah. Yeah. He goes, he goes to the office to like get some information out of him. And I got to tell you, this is... Again, not my favorite moment of the movie, but I never knew how entertaining it could be. And it's because, by the way, I think he's a good actor and he's selling it. Chris O'Donnell is getting the shit beat out of him here. Oh, yeah. It's, it is fucking <laughs> hilarious. You didn't know you wanted to see it. And the same thing happens in the next scene when he gets shot in the heart. I'm like, well, that's pretty <laughs> satisfying. Apparently, in the unrated edition, now we all watch the theatrical, I believe, right? Yes, that's correct. Because the only way to watch the three minutes longer unrated edition was to buy it <laughs> and i yeah. don't think so uh, just take a look at this picture because uh, i just put there because uh apparently in the unrated edition like uh, jerry o'connell's <laughs> nose explodes in cgi blood well, it, it's oh. not just that it's a bunch of more blood because i have seen the unrated. i watched the theatrical for this time oh. but the last time the oh. first time i watched it i saw the unrated version <laughs> really when you watch the unrated version but it was it was i mean it was like whenever it came out on digital originally uh well, i read it on the trivia right like his fucking chest explodes yes it, it's it's really gory and like the digital, like, it, you see it a lot in the movie anyway, but they just amp up all, like, we're in the first days of digital blood puffs and sprays and yeah. all that mm. stuff. So there's just, like, 20 times that in the original, in the <laughs> unrated version. Um, But, yeah, so Max Payne is, like, beating information out of this guy. Uh, It is kind of hilarious. Chris O'Donnell's calling for his secretary, Jackie, and he's just like, Jackie! Jackie! <laughs> Which is so great. And, like, this girl, like, gets up from her desk and is like, Mr. Colvin, is something going on? <laughs> I, I love that he happened to be holding the giant folder of evidence when he when, yes. when he's encountering Max Payne. And <laughs> something, something, Matt, he's like, I'll tell you everything you need to know, Max Payne. You just have to get me out of this office alive. And then Bo Bridges, like, brings in the fake cops who are crooked, and they just shoot him right in the heart. Oh, man. Oh my God. It is so, cause it's a weird, like, 
office standoff. This like fake SWAT team runs in and everybody's like at a standstill because Wahlberg has a gun on Chris O'Donnell and it's just like, boom, fucking huge bullet right to this dude's heart. Love it. I I would have liked another Jesus. (laughs) It's the same guy. Who keeps inviting that guy? He's on the SWAT team. (laughs) And then we get the most impossible sequence. It's like Max Payne opens fire on, on like this basically mercenary SWAT team. Yeah. And none of them can hit him whatsoever to the point at which he's just like leaving the building. (laughs) It's crazy. I mean, they shoot the shit out of this place. This office is decimated. Uh, And yeah, he gets out of there and he gets down to like some basement level and he runs into Ludacris and it's like, all right, now remember Mark Wahlberg, I'm in this movie. And then like a bomb goes off to blow the door. So that's kind of the end of Ludacris trying to get into the movie. Yeah. So he Max Payne runs away. And then it's just like, you let him leave. Damn. <laughs> it is a wild coincidence. And maybe they named it after the fact. But like the drug that makes people see these Valkyrie things is just called Valkyr. Mm-hmm. Like, again, you got to do better at covering yes. your tracks here, <laughs> Bo Bridges. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. Well, I, I originally I was going to call BB Super Juice. So what do you want? <laughs> Come on. No, people, everyone didn't know that I'm making the drugs. Isn't that what you want? <laughs> BB's patented Super Juice. <laughs> Makes you a better soldier. Step right Five up. Minutes. Son, do you want to be a better soldier? Come here. Come here. Do you, do you mind dark demonic visions? No. Uh, <laughs> Good. No, you don't. Sir, sir, are you related to me? <laughs> no. Uh, so, like, he, Wahlberg, is watching this Lupino testimonial video that they shot. And this is where I was like, oh, shit, this is insane that it, now all of a sudden it's a war on terror movie. Yes. Like, out of fucking nowhere. And it's just this dude being like, oh, man, when I was hepped up on this stuff, I was killing all sorts of insurgents. Don't even worry mm-hmm. about it. Something, something, red, white, and blue. <laughs> okay. Which I guess, like, when you think about it, the the movie... It's got a political... Is being critical about sure. all the bullshit. Yeah. So that's kind of something. It's definitely yeah. not uh, shining a positive rah-rah America light on but it. But it was 08. That was just where the tide was at the time. But it, I, I agree. I mean, it's better than the opposite. Well, for sure. Exactly. And, yeah. and also, it would be impossible to be inspired by anything in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's if you true. watch this, it snuffs out everything. It's just the look of it, even. It's- yeah, we're not going to secretly trick guys and girls into recruiting themselves into the military by watching Max Payne. <laughs> we'll just leave that for the if, NFL. If anything, we're going to to, if anything, we're going to drive them to the real drugs. That's <laughs> true. And this is when, like, Max Payne's like, "Well, I got, I got to do it. I got to go to Club Ragnarok and stuff them out." And it's like, she, Milkudis, for some reason, like, you can't go to. I'll, I'll help you with anything, Max Payne, except for going to Club Ragnarok for some reason. It's a weird thing where, like, for this scene and this scene only, sure. she like emotionally cares about him because she's like kind of almost crying, yeah. and she's like. You think if he kills you, you'll be with them again. To which Wahlberg responds, that's how it works. And cocks a gun. <laughs> just like, that's how the Lord that's, Jesus Christ works. That's, Ka-cock. that's just heaven, bro. That's just it. <laughs> it's the laws of heaven, stupid. Ka-cock. <laughs> and I, I am not going to hell for that Vietnamese guy because I was gacked up on Valkyr when it happened. <laughs> it so it's not even happened. my fault. It already happened. Why do you care? It already happened. <laughs> it's in the past. <laughs> so Payne goes to this club or whatever, and he's fucking taking out dudes left and right. This over the back slow mo shotgun That's shot pretty though, silly. Bullet time. It was a little much. The bullet time. That's yeah. true. You had to do it, bro. A little bit, yeah. But are you are you like bending over backwards doing stuff like that in the game? You do like the slow motion. It, Something yeah, happens it's kind of more down. Sam Peck and Paw esque. Yeah, like I know the slow motion stuff happens, but is he like a fucking gymnast bending over like this? I, I don't know. I think there was oh, no, too you're thinking chunky. Of, you're thinking of the game Hot Hot Girls. You, the oh, gym, oh, right. Yeah, right. yeah, a lot of bending over backwards. Yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. All the yoga levels. It's very. Uh, it, Mamma mia, now that I can do this, I'll never leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. He's laying no. pipe into his own mouth. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. No, I uh, hope I, uh, you know what? I hope a giant flower that spits fire doesn't come out of his dick into his mouth. Wow, 
Do you think, oh, honestly, there I would is. say, <clears throat> let me know if you guys disagree. I would classify Birdo as among those hot, hot girls. Let's get uh, absolutely. In the absolutely. Totally. Yeah. I'm into it. No doubt if about Birdo it. If Birdo was real, Def would. If a drug <laughs> that I could see demons, maybe once. He has like this big fight scene with Lupino and... What is it? Fucking Bo Bridges comes out of nowhere and he's like, the angels aren't done with you yet. And just fucking shoots this guy. Yes. That's the end of that. <laughs> it's kind of all right. It's kind of. A, and that's when you know for sure he's crooked, which is like 20 minutes too late. But at the same time, it's like you kind of want Mark Wahlberg to win that fight. Right. And then say, yep. you know what I mean? Like just that, <laughs> that makes it the movie. This is what this scene, like where that uh, BB shoots the guy instead, apparently inspired one of the guys who made the video game to like write a screed denouncing the film. <laughs> Why? Because like BB in the game was like a hero and not crooked? Well, no, because Max Payne should be killing this character and not oh. BB, who, who wasn't even anything or like a resemblance of, of the character in the game. It was like quite, quite a different turn for BB in what? this. There was also oh. uh, I forget if it was actually shot or just planned. The original was that they were he, Max Payne was going to kill uh, the lady who's the head of uh, the pharmaceutical company, right? And, yes, and they were going to do a end of Die Hard three, uh, shoot a, 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 a electric wire into a helicopter, yeah, blow up the oh, helicopter and see yeah. this old lady get fried up. But uh, no, I guess we're not doing that. Instead, maybe we'll hint we'll do it in the next that, movie. <laughs> that might be it, exciting. So yeah, we can't have it here. That's what the stinger is: uh -huh. is him being like, "Now I got to kill this old woman." Like, that's, <laughs> It's literally what there it is. Was, we already got the footage for it. There was Max Payne 2 uh, as a video game, not as a movie. Well, you know, I, I can understand, like, the guy who made the game, you know, very popular game. He's very proud of the, you know, the game that he made or whatever. And to see it butchered like this on screen, I get it's a bummer. But the guy uh, should be thankful, at least. This is literally the only screenplay this person has ever written. <laughs> <laughs> Before or since, literally the only fucking thing. It's one of those, like, how did you get it? How did yeah. you get the job? Who the fuck are well, you? It's also so rare that that ever happens that you only like, even with a piece of shit like this, the fact that you were like, you were the guy who took the hit, like, look, we need to put out the Max Payne movie. The kids love this <laughs> shit. We got to get it out years there. ago. And yeah. so they get this guy to finally do it. And they can't even throw up a bone to like, uh, you know, a uh, dog babies for the hunt for Roscoe or <laughs> like something like that. Just anything. Yeah. This wasn't there. A, yeah. Speaking of babies, wasn't there like a baby geniuses direct to streaming shit in the works? Probably. Oh. Hey, please. Yeah. Get this guy. The, the Max Payne guy should write, write the baby. We got to we got to eventually do that baby geniuses movie. Oh happen. yeah, for I'm fucking so John Void alone. I would love to talk about some babies again. Uh, I don't know if the fucking authorities huh? would like you. To do that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with talking about babies. I'm not talking to babies. It's oh, good. Thank God. Uh, a question, because we keep saying like, oh yeah, you know, the game came out seven years uh, before the movie. When did that second Max Payne game come out? Uh, was it before I, this movie? Like, yes. were we riding oh, the popularity of both? I think the first game was 2001-ish, and the second game was, like, 2003, 2004. Yeah, so it's, it's been, oh, like, four okay. or five years of nothing from the Max So Payne still, universe. got it. Okay. So, yeah, the, the, that fucking candle had still been extinguished. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, there's kind of this fucking Bo Bridges, like, parlor scene speech here. He's talking about how he... This is a weird thing where he's talking about like he at when he killed Mark Wahlberg's yes. wife, he realized what he'd been missing all his life. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, killing people? Yes. It's this weird thing. It was like, <laughs> it was the first problem I ever solved all by myself. And I was like, wow, this is gonna be great. I'll just start killing people. I read what a this weird some, thing. I started reading re reading this guy, Brett Easton Ellis. She's got some <laughs> some books that really are influential for me. And I think just some bloodlust would really break open my life a little bit. Get get a little loose. Some of it gets a little uh, you know, creaky hand weird, <laughs> if you ask me, but it still gave me some ideas. Uh and uh Wahlberg here sort of takes a minute. There's a dumb as shit flashback to Wahlberg again in the bedroom, and he sees fucking Bo Bridges like reflection in this like baby uh what do you call these things carousels uh, or mobile 
Mobile, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, and he's like slinking out the window, like gotta go. Uh, by the it way, is such a dumb effect. I love that the door of the room says "baby" on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Mark Wahlberg doesn't get too confused when he, you know, was when Max Payne's coming home wasted after working a forty-eight <laughs> hour shift, dude. Oh, that's Don't baby. throw up in what here. Where do I go in? There's one that says "baby." Yeah, there's no. And there's one that says "wife." The fucking master bedroom should say "Max" on the door. <laughs> So that's the room you go in, okay? Go in it. It's the bathroom. That's the one that has Max on it. Go, <laughs> yeah, go in totally. there, please. Because like, he is a piece of shit. Well, I, I would like to think that it's more that uh, there's no movement whatsoever on actually getting this child a name. No, like no Max, not at all. Max is boycotting all all the good ones. He's like... Little uh, little baby pain, dude. And also... No. Just Max. It has to be Max Jr. Come on, honey. Anything else? No, Max Jr. Well, why doesn't Bo Bridges like, yeah, no, when I killed your baby, it was even better. Like, I loved killing your wife. That really <laughs> clarified some things for me. But man, killing your baby. Whoo, doggy, that was fun. Or maybe it's the other way, dude. He's like, I had a great time killing your wife. And then when I killed your baby, I was like, whoa, BB, back up. <laughs> Ladies only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay to be you know, friends with Lucifer, but you don't want to be Lucifer. <laughs> you must, <laughs> you must be this tall to ride this ride, and that means the fucking Reapers ride. <laughs> yeah, I recreated the, the the last caress by the Misfits. You know that song, Max? I recreated it with your family. <laughs> uh, kids at home, look that too. Now. <laughs> it's Ever good... seen a movie called Manhunter? <laughs> <laughs> I gave your family the dollar hide. <laughs> Hey, Max, look at this cool tattoo on my back. <laughs> I broke all these mirrors. <laughs> so he uh, gives him two doses. It puts it in his pocket, two doses of Valkyr. It's like, you're going to kill yourself, Max. And, and then he's like, uh, here, go. Hey, other guy, give me that rope. And then that's when, like, Max makes this move. There is a solid uh, Max Payne headbutting Bo Bridges right here. Oh, yeah. it, it's like... It's on par with like the best professional wrestling headbutts you've ever mm-hmm. seen. Bo Bridges fucking sells that shit, man. He drops like a sack of rocks. He does. It's pretty good. It's all pretty great. And so yeah, this is, he jumps in the river, and so it's like here we are. Yeah. So now you know how I got here. <laughs> and he's fucking hearing this dead wife. We're back, we're like, back to the start of the yet, movie, Max. bro. I hope you want to rewatch <laughs> it again because we're just gonna roll it again from the top. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You didn't accidentally hit rewind. <laughs> now the movie just caught up with the prologue. Hey, what's a prologue? You know, people get so confused. I get so confused during movies. Let's make a movie that's not confusing for once. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be three hours long, bro. It's going to be like a Bollywood movie. Narratively, we've caught up where we were. We're not going to restart the movie. The reels didn't break. You don't need to go back and beat up the ushers like I might have. <laughs> Often Dude yeah he goes out and he's like The fucking lights are still on I'm trying to watch Fast and Furious 7 yeah. Turn the fucking lights off It just off. becomes like Gremlins 2 and Hulk Hogan's <laughs> Oh just with Much less charm <laughs> Just as uh, racist so yeah. though Actually if you could believe it mm. Yeah yeah right there equal footing on the racism mm-hmm. Or did you say less racist No same I think same Yeah same right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so dude, he fucking climbs out of this water and he's freezing and shit. And here it comes, you guys. Yes. He <laughs> takes both of these vials. He chugs both of these things because he's like, it's uh, you know, the river is frozen, and so he's all like got hypothermia and whatnot. So it's like this is the last thing to revive myself. And let me tell you something. I had to fucking pause it and <laughs> watch this three times. Oh, I'm sure because he takes this shit. And then Mark Wahlberg making the dumbest face <laughs> he's ever made on camera. I love this part. Roars like Godzilla. It's yep. so good. It's an out and out Godzilla. And, and I was screaming. And meanwhile, in the background, like there's like flames and demons and oh, shit. And it's just <laughs> fucking little firecracker effects going. And it's, of course, in slow motion. So it looks dumber. Of course. <laughs> It's unfucking believable how stupid it is. I loved it so much. Right. And right here we get like a five second thing of where like Ludacris called in the FBI. Here's the cameo of the guy from the video game. Shut up. Let's yep. move on. We're not going back to that. <laughs> <laughs> we did it already. It's done. 
Yeah, that ought to fucking satisfy those little SOBs. <laughs> Ludacris, by the way, is dressed like Columbo for half of this it's movie. It's so silly. The little Am hat. I? Yeah, I was going to say, I was just about to ask, does he have a stupid hat yeah, on, stupid or was hat. I just no, making that up? He's got that he's little got hat. hat. He's got that little hat. Well, apparently the story goes that this role was written for a 60-year-old man, but Ludacris did such a good job in the audition. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just oh, kept I mean, the I wardrobe? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> was the 60-year-old man who auditioned Bo Bridges? <laughs> <laughs> we got to, Bo, we got to thanks for coming in anyway. Uh, you got beat out by Ludacris. Uh, don't kill yourself. We got to let else for you. Well, well, we paid for the dentures. You might as well use them. Uh, I know you have good teeth. Just put them in as well. Now I'm thinking about swapping some roles here. Can you imagine? We should get a note to Vin Diesel mm-hmm. uh, for Fast 10. Bo Bridges, and he's oh, not a yes. villain. He's just part of like they're Hell like. Hell yeah! He, Vin Diesel's like, oh man, for this job we're gonna need a hefty set of oh, brakes. I'm gonna go to my A number one brake man, and it's just Bo Bridges, my my man, Fat Tom. <laughs> <laughs> fat Tom is in the house. They really should have like a fat white boomer dude to yes. at least run interference on people. Exactly. Absolutely. And then he is shot to death by the end of the oh, movie. Oh, for sure. It's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Each movie, they get a new, like, fat boomer dude to roll up. It'd be great. It's like, you know, one of them could do a distraction where they cause a scene at, like, a Margaritaville or something. <laughs> they got fat Tom the break man. Let's pour out a Corona for him. <laughs> oh, totally, dude. This He had his last barbecue last week. You remember Fat Tom the Brake Man from all the barbecues we've done, right? He, he always took over. He, he always took all the leftovers. <laughs> the the barbecue. <laughs> oh, dude, it'd be great. There's a bunch of fucking fake Photoshop things of Bo Bridges. Like, he's been here the whole time. He's been our long, <laughs> our long time <laughs> friend the whole time. Just him and Paul Walker in a picture. Oh, yeah. They could drive off together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, Colin in the FBI. Where Bo Bridges fucking shagging ass running uh, is kind of something I didn't know I needed. And he's like, it's him. The, the other character's name is Joe Sal, I think. Sure. Uh, his, like, second in command or whatever. And this is, it's another, I love a good casual line delivery where it should be a little more you know should have some more like a oomph behind it he's getting all these like weapons out or whatever and he says that this is bo bridges says to this guy he goes uh oh, take some c4 <laughs> yes <laughs> why, why did you take some c4 all right do you got napalm yeah you should have some napalm just, you know it's max Payne. we should have some napalm just for just a case and you know it's the big uh, assault on the on the place scene it's you know it's as advertised, he's shooting people. It's fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is the, this is where I was like, wait, what the fuck? Because, like, he is having a total, like, class A freak out from being on these drugs. And, like, he, you're seeing what he's seeing, yeah. and it's all the fucking demon shit or whatever. And then, like, he is in, like, the the pharmaceutical company building. He yes. is on, like, a top floor, you know, high up floor of this thing. And then out of nowhere, Mila Kunis appears. And I'm like, how did this character get into yep. the building? How did you make it to this level of the video game? She flied with the demons, of course. Ah, yeah, on the she, backs oh, of the Valkyrie. Right. Yeah, you know how she got mm. there is she was, because uh, she's an attractive lady, she ended up in Hot Hot Girls, and Mario <laughs> showed her that hack where you could walk on top of the level. Oh, oh that's right. totally. <laughs> Which was a great, Look, great one. You put your face in the Amai pipe, and then I show you the other magic pipe. <laughs> He's just impressing hot, hot girls by breaking every brick he sees with his head. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it, dude. That'll Hell impress yeah, hot girls. Definitely will. You never know it where money's going to fall out of that brick. <laughs> she straight up says to him, this is one of the worst lines ever. Uh, she's like, you're not done yet. Yes. He's just like, that's what my dead wife just said when I was in the river. By the way, I'm gacked out of my fucking mind, bro. <laughs> oh, totally. The last fucking act of this movie. I'm high as a goddamn kite. Am I in Afghanistan now? <laughs> <laughs> there is a really funny moment because he is so strung out on this shit. He bursts into Bo Bridges' office with a machine gun. He's like, bah! He's like firing this thing. Literally, no one in the room at all. He's just so he's strung out, just opening doors, firing immediately. 
That rules. Uh, I love it. I support it. <laughs> uh, but then this dude blows the C4. This Joe Sal guy blows the C4. And pretty cool explosion effect here. Knocks out like a whole floor of this huge office building. Well, that's, Not too shabby. Well, yeah. Mila, Mila Kunis comes in, inspires Max Payne. She's like, I'll take care of the number two. And she kind of does. And then he hits the C4 and she just disappears from the movie until the stinger. It's kind of great. She literally is like firing a gun at some of these security guys and like an elevator door closes on her. And that's literally the end of her for the movie. <laughs> yep. Proper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She takes an, ele- pretty... an elevator out of the movie. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Oh, is this my floor? Oh, no. The movie's on the floor. I'm, 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 I'm up on four. <laughs> Sorry. I got to get it. Uh, no. Oh, I got to go down to the stinger scene, actually. <laughs> yeah. What's that? In the fucking sub basement of this movie? Got it. Oh, oh second build. See ya. See ya, second build. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Goodbye. She was wait. She was built over Bo Bridges. Yes, she was. Yeah. Insane. Yes, she was. Which is Insane. why you give him the stinger. Like you could do that, yeah. but then you Ooh. give him the stinger. Yep, that's what the stinger is for. Or the hammer. Sorry, the hammer. I, I'm, You're getting terms that you yourself made up <laughs> mixed up. Yes, yeah, so give him the hammer. The hammer. Therefore, <laughs> yes. While we're talking about the cast, I just uh, remembered by obviously looking up who plays. Uh, the uh, head of the whole company that is supposed to be hinted at will kill her next time. Kate Burton, who was Margot, the uh, like journalist friend in Big Trouble in Little China. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. where yeah. She's she was. From. She looked really familiar. And she, uh, yeah, there, there it is. She pops up in a ton of stuff. Oh yeah, uh, she's she's constantly working. She was on the television show Scandal that I watched more than I should have. Mm. Wow. Of uh, yeah, she was in wow. Grey's yeah. Anatomy for like thirty years. I just feel like if uh, Francis Conroy says no, you're like, "Hey, Kate, how's it going?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so whatever, we're up on the roof. It's just just Bo Bridges and Mark Wahlberg here, and he's like, "Well, all right, so now I give the big speech, right?" And he just fucking shoots Bo Bridges in the heart, and he drops dead. It's the second time we do slow motion uh, or whatever slow motion time. Bullet, bullet time. time. Apologies. Yeah, we gotta just say what the <laughs> Matrix said. And he pulls it out, and he pulls out his gun. There is so much snow on this gun. Immediately, yep. I was like, "That's yeah. ridiculous." I was like, so is he just like been standing there for two <laughs> minutes pointing this gun well, and he's, the snow accumulated? I guess he's just so fucking high. He's just like, I'm going to fucking kill you, man. I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> the snow is just mounting <laughs> on this gun. It would be so incredible. It's like Bo Bridges like, oh, uh, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to kill me or you all right? Dude? What's a, going on there? He just walks away and then he's like, wow, I must have killed him, bro. He's gone. <laughs> I must have shot him to hell. He fucking leaves down the stairs <laughs> right behind. Bo Bridges just goes home, goes to sleep. <laughs> wow, that drug, you know, that drug keeps working out for me. Wow, pretty cool. <laughs> and, you know, I have to say credit to this movie for just fucking ending. Yeah. Like, Bo Bridges drops dead and, you know, Wahlberg kind of just like sits on the ground on the roof and some SWAT guys come in and these are like the dudes who are with Ludacris and, uh, uh McCaffrey there and you just hear this dude be like Max Payne is alive we got him <laughs> credits yes. and then now, cut to the yeah. uh comedy central roast special yes! effects did i dude i made the same note <laughs> it is exactly the comedy central roast of max payne it's nuts Oh, man. Bow, I no, cannot... bow, no, 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 no. Dude, bow, no, I no, no, no. fucking expected Greg Giraldo to be doing <laughs> material on the back end of this. <laughs> Because, like, that's how old that shit yes, is. Yeah. Greg Geraldo was still alive yes. and they were oh, doing absolutely. that. You know what I mean? Big time, yeah. it's, it's, it's insane how no one was like, excuse me, uh, this looks comically like the Comedy Central <laughs> yeah. roast font. It's just all the close-ups of all these guns, different, like, revolvers, shotguns, and then just all the way in the middle, it's Jeffrey Ross's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next time, bro, we're going to get the <laughs> Roastmaster General. <laughs> oh my god, it turns out the roast master general was in on my family's mitre. <laughs> oh, every time I see every time I see the demons, I see Jeffrey Ross too. Uh and so this stinger scene, another dumb as shit line that happens is so uh, it's Max Payne, he walks into this bar. Some dude, uh, this bartender like opens up a couple of brew dogs here and he gives them to Max Payne and he goes, "Good to have you back." And I was like, <laughs> "Who are you?" I don't think you've been in this movie until this point. <laughs> I just say that to everybody. You know, it just, uh, yeah. whenever, when I, I just like making friends, you know. Uh, good to have you back. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> well, uh, I presume all these people are long regulars of mine. If you're if you're ordered Bud Light in my bar, you're family, and that means you're cheap. 
<laughs> just like my cheap family. <laughs> Uh, and then, so yeah, she just sits down with Mila Kunis, who's reading a newspaper, and she sort of gives it to him, and it's a picture of the, this uh, old lady, and it's like, rich lady getting richer, Acer stock skyrocketing, and it is a true fucking let's go get him, LOL, we're never going to see a sequel. Nope, it's not in a million not years. years. God bless oh, him. I love, I love a bad, bad stinger. Totally. Totally. I mean, because the thing about it is, like, shit, if you had made a second Max Payne movie, okay, but, like, now you're just embarrassed forever. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the sequel could have existed without a stinger. Yes. Idiots. Of course. Uh, but that is the end of this movie, this dreadful Max Payne motion picture. Go around the horn here. Recommendations and final <laughs> thoughts, Steve Sadak? No, it's really, really bad. I will say, and Wahlberg is really ill-suited to it i think specifically it's really funny uh we didn't talk about what he like when he's going to see his baby he's got like like obviously the director was like all right now you're happy in the scene it's like happy got it and he's got the dopiest <laughs> dumbest smile it's like all right now you're brooding <laughs> brooding got it and like i mean like he's just really ill-suited to this you need somebody with like some more range like a clive owen type or something some mm. broodier kind of shit but all all told the action isn't terrible. It's 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 kind of a it's kind of a fun watch. It's a light not recommend. Light mm. not recommend. Chris Cabot. Big not recommend. Gotcha. Uh mostly because I don't like it when you tamper down the Boston and Mark Walden. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't like when you deplete him of the one thing that is kind of funny about him. <laughs> uh, also, just set it in Boston. What are we sure. doing? Exactly. I say all of it. At any time you have a movie with him, that fucking The Gambler remake, Entourage, put them all in Boston. Yes. Because it makes more sense that way, and it's more of his ground. This, this When he has to like put all the character of his voice out, to be more bland, it's almost as bad as the Doctor Strange thing. He it, yells at someone in this movie, and it fucking bean towns up really quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it breaks. You get some, you know, some nice flowers here and there, but like it's it's just not enough. And uh, yeah. I, I get very tired very quickly <laughs> of that stuff, uh, and I get very tired very quickly of this movie. So no. So we will leave the last thought to the only person who played this video game. So I will just say, uh, yeah, it's a not recommend. It's kind of an almost recommend. But here's the thing. That Valkyrie shit is some of the dumbest stuff I've watched in a really long time. And especially if it's not in the video game, what are you doing? Like, yeah, the action's kind of fine, whatever. It would have been probably like a, you know, hangover movie kind of thing. But that Valkyrie shit, I cannot get behind that. It's dumb as shit. So yeah, it's it's a hard no for me. So Eric Siska, PC gaming fan. Oh yes, away. yes, the big Max Payne fan. I you know, <laughs> I I played it in college, and uh, then I moved over to Halo for a little bit. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like you do, like guys do. Um, <laughs> so you know, I was I was. It's not like I'm a f super fan of the video game property, and I'm like they're not doing it justice or something. <laughs> It's it's all trash. I, I it's a big not recommend for me. I almost see where you're coming from, Steve. Like some of the action or whatever. I was thinking about this throughout the day, and I went back and rated my letterbox score a half star lower than I did initially because <laughs> this is this is just trash. It's just nothing yeah. here. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a few moments of cool bullet time, and you got Bo Bridges, which which is which is unfortunate. I. I <laughs> <laughs> it's a no for me. I wish Bo Bridges had more to do. I wish anyone had more to do. I wish I understand the motivations of more of these characters. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say as a quick final thing, it turns out like Nelly Furtado does kind of just act. I mean, a lot of these credits are just like music videos or whatever, but like she's been in some things, including, you know, she is, uh, is she, what is she? Uh, yeah, she's Canadian. Uh, she's in something called like Hockey the Musical. Oh, is that how she got this job? Because she's Canadian and they... <laughs> I they think she was just walking down the house. street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was just walking in Toronto. They're like, hey, Nelly Furtado, you want to be in a movie? <laughs> Look, oh, we, it's called. We're scrapping the original song you had planned for Max Payne. <laughs> but would you like to be in Max Payne? She should have done a song. You're totally yeah, right. Absolutely. That would have been anything. Yeah, well, the thing, it's from 2010. It's called Score, colon, a hockey Oh, musical. my God, that sounds Canadian and a half. Yeah. A teenage hockey player becomes a national sensation. Did Jay Burrowcall direct that too? <laughs> uh, some dude named Michael McGowan. 
directed it. So I don't, I don't know what that dude's about. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. I thought Nelly, Nelly Furtado was pretty good in this movie. Absolutely. A shining light in an otherwise grim-looking, weird piece of shit movie. Uh, but that is going to do it for our discussion of Max Payne. Of course, if you want more We Hate Movies, check out patreon.com slash we hate movies we got a, a wlm out uh all about uh the uh the great arnold film last action hero there you go a lot of fun now, that's are. action done right folks we've got <laughs> totally. another morbius for you morb heads it's the spider-man episode with morbius or the first spider-man episode with morbius on the animation damnation feed that's a lot of fun <laughs> Oh, yeah. Love that. Who are we doing on um, the Glee Glossary this Gleep month? The Glossary, we'll be talking about the Emperor's Royal Guards. We'll find out why they wear those red robes and mm. so much less. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we have uh, uh, this month, Once in a Lifetime is back. Like we mentioned, we are talking about Stock by My Doctor, colon, Patience Revenge. It's the third one in the incredible franchise. Stock Doc 3. Yeah. It's fantastic. Ooh, and Stock Doc 3. I like if that. You're, if you're a fan of TV movies, you might be a fan of TV episodes. We have a Star Trek recap podcast called The Nexus, where we do an episode of TOS and TNG. But that's not all, folks. We also have Melro 210, where we talk about an episode of 90210 and Melrose Place. So look at all that. And, of course, the uh, the first commentary of 2022, uh, we dropped it last month. Indeed, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Man, Terry. Check that out as well. And uh, on this feed, of course, the show continues next Tuesday, a brand new episode dropping for your ears. Uh, Steve, what are we talking about then? We are talking about Soylent Green, by the way. Ooh, it's my pe- God. Yeah, getting a little old on the feed. I kind of like that. That's right. I like dipping our toes in the 70s. This is a movie set in 2022, so that's another right. reason to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I can't wait. Because aside from like his small appearance in the Tim Burton Apes movie. I don't. We haven't done a Charlton Heston. No, movie. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, we almost did True Lies, but that was removed from uh, streaming. He's in that oh, for a hot right. second. I think you, you guys kept on telling me we can't do a Bowling for Columbine episode. But <laughs> I would. I love really to. went. I went to the mats for it. I would. You know what, Chris? Maybe we'll do that on our own. <laughs> Mister Heston, I really love Soylent Green. Come out and talk about it. Just got you talking about guns. <laughs> Food from my cold, dead people. (laughs) So until next week, when Soylent Green is people, folks, spoiler alert, I'm Andrew Jupiter. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.